Okay, we made it all the way to uh, chapter 18, Power Laws and the uh, Rich Get Richer. Uh, so, but let's start out by uh, taking a look at uh, popularity as a network phenomenon. So, so far we've seen in networks uh, different ways that the behavior of others can impact our own uh, behavior. Uh, one, you know, they can provide information such as the example with uh, marbles that we got information cascades from or others could provide uh, direct benefits, such as uh, joining a social network that had a large population base. Uh, we're gonna examine popularity and there's actually quite an imbalance in terms of popularity. Most people, books, uh, music, they're not that well known, but there are definitely a few that stand out. Uh, this one here is uh, Sgt. Pepper's uh, Lonely Hearts Club Band. Uh, album by the uh, Beatles and one of the most popular albums of all time. Uh, great album and definitely uh, worth a listen. Uh, here we see a large number of uh, famous people that are on the uh, cover of this, including uh, uh, eight Beatles, oddly enough, uh, four of them are duplicates over on the left. Uh, but uh, we spent a lot of time looking at this album cover and seeing how many of the different people that we could identify in this album cover. And there's certainly a lot of famous people here in this album cover. So how do we measure popularity? Well, for web pages, we might use in links, which are the full set of links pointing to a given web page. And we can ask the question as a function of K, what fraction of the pages on the web have K in links? And we might be tempted to think, well, yeah, it's going to be kind of a normal distribution. Um, uh, and that, you know, is due to the central limit theorem. When people measured the distribution of links on the web, they actually found something quite different. And, you know, what did they find? Well, uh, in the studies over many different web snapshots, taking different points in the web's history, the recurrent finding is the fraction of web pages that have KN links is approximately proportional to one over K squared. And this is a power law, a function that decreases as k to some fixed power such as 1 over k squared. Uh, now this decreases more slowly as k increases. So pages with a very large number of inlinks are much more common than we would expect to find with a uh, normal distribution. Uh, when used to measure the fractions of items having value k, it says uh, qualitatively that it's possible to see very large values of k. And power laws tend to be more likely than normal distributions for popularity phenomena. Uh, phone calls to specific numbers, uh, book sales, citations and scientific papers. Uh, for the record, uh, citations and the telephone calls are one over K cubed. Uh, and the text details a test to determine whether something or not follows a power law, and that's on page 546 if you'd like to read up on uh, how you can determine that something is following a power law statistically. So basically, these arise from feedback introduced by correlated decisions across the population, like we've been seeing in the past uh, couple of chapters. The book builds a model of observable consequences for decision making in the presence of these cascades. So we have the pages created in order, page one is created first, page two, page three, all the way up to page n. And when page j is created, it produces a link to an earlier web page, according to the following probabilistic rule. Uh, with probability p, it chooses a page i uniformly at random from all the other earlier pages. So if we're on page four, it could pick uh, uniformly between uh, page one to three. With probability one minus p, it instead chooses a page i uniformly at random from among all earlier pages and creates a link to the page that i points to. Uh, this describes the creation of a single link from page J. You can repeat this process to create multiple independently generated links from page J, but for now we're uh, just going to stick at one uh, outbound. The main result about this model is if we run it for many pages, fraction of pages with K in links uh, gets distributed according to that power law, uh, one over K raised to the C, where the value of C depends on the choice that you have for that probability of P. And uh, part 2B is the uh, key to this uh, step, and that makes this rich gets richer model. Uh, and you're likely to see some extremely popular web pages. Uh, the popularity that Perry uh, experiences an increase in popularity is directly proportional to its current popularity. And this is also known as preferential attachment. We can see this in the growth of bacterial colonies 
common gene sequences in uh, popular cities. Uh, pictured here is uh, Jakarta, and it's uh, pretty popular, but it only comes in at uh, number 29 on the uh, most populated cities, although I've heard as high as uh, 19, and a big, big city. But in terms of the rich get richer and who gets popular, there's a bit of unpredictability in the model. So the initial rise to popularity is a pretty fragile thing and getting established can be hard. Uh, random effects early in the process play a large role. And I'm gonna illustrate this with a uh, little discussion of dumb luck that can be involved. Uh, shown a knife for a Japanese punk rock trio from Osaka, Japan. Uh, they formed their group after getting bored at their jobs uh, back in about, I think, 1981. And they released a small number of their tapes in the U.S., and one happened to fall into the hands of Kurt Cobain, who was the uh, lead singer of uh, Nirvana, just through uh, dumb luck. And he asked them to open uh, for Nirvana on their U.S. tour. While they're not, not the most popular band in the world, they still play shows and tour 40 years after their formation. They seem to make a decent living doing this as a, a full-time job. Uh, but the point here is that there's uh, some random luck involved in getting to that uh, initial measure of uh, popularity and being able to stick with it. I'm sure you can think of a number of bands that uh, you know, never achieved that quite, that quite level of popularity or, you know, definitely a number that never uh, quite achieved the uh, level of popularity that Nirvana achieved. And, you know, would the same thing uh, still be popular if we replayed history as a game of chance? Um, and there was a research group, uh, Salgenkirk, uh, and they uh, groups, uh, ran an experiment that looked at uh, this. Uh, they created a music download site with 48 pretty obscure songs of varying quality that were written by actual performing Visitors to the site were presented with a list of songs and given the opportunity to listen to or download the song. So um, they were assigned at random to one of eight different parallel copies of the site. And the parallel copies started out identically, but each one evolved differently. So there were different things that were popular on each one of the eight different uh, sites. Uh, when they looked at the results, the market share of the different songs very considerably across the sites. Now, as a caveat, the uh, best songs never ended up at the bottom and the worst songs never ended up at the top, but there was considerable variation in uh, where they landed. Uh, and they used this approach to show that overall the feedback produced a greater in inequality in outcomes. Specifically, they assigned some users to a ninth version of the site uh, in which, uh, in which uh, no feedback was provided in terms of how many people uh, downloaded the songs. In this, uh, in this version, uh, there was uh, slightly less variation uh, in the market's share of different songs. And this leads us into the uh, long tail phenomenon. Uh, popularity uh, distributions have impacts on business, particularly in media. You know, so which ones do you sell? Are most of the sales being generated by a small set of items that are enormously popular or by a much larger population of items that are each individually less popular. And Chris Anderson's long tail in 2004 argued that uh, in the uh, age of the internet, it's the uh, latter. It's this uh, larger population of items that are each individually less popular that drive a lot of the sales, uh, specialized items or niche market items. In the graph, uh, we order the books by sales rank. And when we uh, look at the popularity of the books as we move out to larger and larger sale ranks into these uh, niche products, uh, the characteristic shape of the, of the curve goes to a long tail going slowly downward to the right. Uh, and that shows us why he called it the uh, long tail phenomenon. Uh, it's worth noting that curves of this type with axis ordered so they're variable on the x-axis is rank rather than popularity have a long history and they're often called zip plots after the linguist uh, George uh, Zip who uh, produced such curves for a number of human activities. Most famously, he identified uh, the empirical principle known as Zipf's law, that the frequency of the jth most common word in English is uh, proportional to one over j. So again, obeying that uh, power law. Uh, a related phenomenon is the uh, end of rarity. And there is a Bill Wyman article on Lester Bang's uh, basement uh, column, part of uh, Slate from 2011. And Lester Bang's was a uh, rock critic back in the uh, 70s and uh, before. Um, one city dreamed of having a basement with every album ever released. Uh, this has oddly enough happened with the advent of sites such as YouTube, Spotify, et cetera. 
rarities are no longer less available. Uh, to illustrate this, uh, what I've got here is the uh, long version of uh, Crimson and Clover by Tommy James and the Shondells. My cousin uh, spent a long time looking for this version of the record at different record shops and in different cities. Uh, I was able to listen to it today by turning on my phone and asking Siri to play it for me. So I didn't have to do all the uh, travel and uh, searching that he had to do in order to find this. Uh, now, conversely, I spent a long time looking for Prince's Black Album and uh, for Subterranean Jungle by the uh, Ramones. Uh, both are available with a bare minimum amount of effort. It's as easy as turning on Siri and asking her to uh, play them or you know, typing it into the YouTube search bar. Uh, even the one the author couldn't obtain easily, Rod Stewart's uh, Faces uh, Live Coast to Coast Overture and Beginners is just a click away. Now, there are some things that are, you know, still uh, rare out there. Um, you know, one of them would be the uh, Wu-Tang Clan album that uh, they only issued uh, one copy of. And that one's going to be a bit harder to find. But I did manage to find about 30 minutes of it that had actually uh, been released. So the full thing hasn't been released in the quality on the uh, release is not that great but you know still part of it is out there even for something that rare where there was only a single one produced that uh, couldn't be shared commercially i think for 100 years so um, you know there is a kind of an end to rarity um, and finally take a look at the effect of search tools on this uh, process uh, you know just on the face of prima facie uh, search tools would seem to make the rich get richer seem to make more popular things more popular i mean does anyone search uh after the first page of google results uh, but if you do use highly specific queries these can help to discover relatively obscure web pages and um, if your site sells a lot of obscure niche products, uh, recommendation system and targeted advertising certainly help a lot out a lot more for selling those items uh, from the long tail than uh, standard search does. So that's the uh, end of chapter 18. Thanks so much for watching.